Tell me about how you got to where you are right now with your mediumship. Where, where did it all start? And, and were you, you were skeptical at the beginning, I'm sure, about what was happening. So maybe take me back um, to the beginning and let's get a little bit of a history on um, what began this, this journey of yours. Well, gosh, it's so hard. I don't, I don't know where to start. Um, I mean, if I go way back, I mean, my family life was rough and I mean, very rough. I, I, I grew up second oldest of nine kids in, a, in an alcoholic family and it, and it was bad. And I believed in God. And I th- and the only reason I'm telling you this stuff is because I think it kind of prepped me for what was going to come. Um, what, what happened was um, by the time I was 20 years old, I had PTSD so bad, I just flat out shook. And I was just terrified of people. And, um, I, and I needed help. And I had been... I, I became an alcoholic. I self-medicated with a 3.2% beer back in the day we could drink when we were 18. And I did that so that I wouldn't become an alcoholic either, hopefully. Well, it didn't work. And, and on top of it, the, the, uh, the reason I drank it is because it took away the shaking and the uh, fear somewhat. Well, I quit working. It worked for a few years and then it quit working. And I was, I was in bad shape. And on top of it, I was raised Catholic, and I always knew that there was a God, but I don't think I was drinking enough of the Kool-Aid for the uh, Catholic thing to work, because I didn't like that God. I knew that there was something else. And um, so long story short, I went to AA meetings, and um, I had a, a good friend who became my sponsor. He told me that if I did believe in a higher power, um, that anything that bothered me, I should turn it over to him daily. And I did. And, and I watched for evidence uh, that, that God was working in my life. And for the first time in all of those years after begging and, and screaming, and even cursing God, everything, trying to get his attention, trying to figure out why he would not help, you know, at at that time, a little kid, you know, all the way through to us and a dog, a young adult, uh, why he wouldn't help me. And all of a sudden, I started seeing signs that he did. And um, just prior to that, I, I asked him to get me out of this. I didn't want to live anymore. And I wouldn't commit suicide because I knew that there was something else. And um, so I said, OK, if you're not going to help me, um, if you're not going to take this away or ease it or anything, at least give me the strength to get through it if there's something in this that I'm supposed to learn from. And I never took another drink for 41, since 41 years ago. And, um, and my life began to change. And I would turn my, my uh, problems over to God on a daily basis. Um, and I would watch like a hawk. I tested God to see for sure that he was in my life, that, he, that there really was a God and that he was working in my life. And sure enough, uh, there were constantly instances where I knew for sure that I wasn't alone. And, and that was significant because after enough of that, every day I would pray and I would turn my will, my life, my heart and soul over to God. And I did that relentlessly. And I, and I said eventually to people, I wouldn't even tell Shirley about this until probably five years ago. I, I developed a personal spiritual relationship with God by doing this. And it was my my God, my relationship, and, I, and it wasn't up for dis- discussion. It was personal, that personal, and uh, and it worked. And my life became better and better and better. Now, don't get me wrong. When I quit drinking, it was hell for four or five years. I mean, the first year, I don't know how I lived. Um, but I got through it all, went through tons and tons of counseling and all that kind of stuff, got through it. My life uh, eventually just kept progressively getting better. Then uh, finally, when I was 35 years old, I met, I met the uh, best wife in the, in the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> the most patient wife. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt about it. In all seriousness. Uh, so anyway, so now jump forward 40 years. When I was 60 years old, we had an electrical contracting company 
and some rental houses, rental properties. Um, we had the, the electrical business for like 18 years and it was just impossible to find good help. And uh, we had a bad incident with a, an employee on drugs and all this stuff. And I just came home after all that mess and, and uh, told Shirley, that's it, I'm done. And uh, we were gonna sell the business and we did. And, um, and, and it worked out well. Well, because of this, uh, and, and we told them that we would work for them for five years, but they needed a bookkeeper, which was Shirley, and they needed a project manager estimator, that was me. And so um, uh, I asked him, you know, if I could come in early in the morning, you know, like five o'clock, two hours before it opened, so I could do my work in the silence before the phone started ringing, all that kind of stuff. Well, that was fine. And uh, so when I was going to work, I was listening to uh, George Norrie's uh, uh, Coast to Coast AM, I believe it was called, Paranor Paranormal Radio Show. Yep. And I, I was a horrible skeptic. I didn't believe in any of that stuff especially medium psychics. And I did hear some of those and space aliens and all sort of things. And finally, but it was something to listen to. So finally I heard a near death experience and I thought that is refreshing. I just love to hear other possibilities of what happens after, after this. And, and I really loved it. And then I heard another shortly after that. And then he interviewed Sandra. And it was pay dirt. I mean, it was the yeah, hundreds and hundreds of podcasts of near death experiencers and doctors and, and uh, hospice workers and such that uh, had experiences that uh, gave information about the possibility of there's more than just this life. And I loved it. And then I kept hearing while well, I was listening to all of Sanders uh, interviews and um, and I still really didn't like the psychics and the mediums and that I just really had nothing for that. And, uh, but I kept hearing from all of them that there was a possibility that if you meditated, you could reach your loved ones. You could possibly hear from your loved ones on the other side. And Shirley's mom had passed about four or five years prior and she loved me to death and I loved her. And I just really, really wanted to try that and see if I could contact her. So I, I, uh, I also heard on her program about sacred acoustics and that they had great meditation music. And I ordered a, uh, the uh, Ohm uh, uh, CD and, and I tried it. I tried to meditate and surely too. I meditated for about five times with no results. I mean, it was just frustrating. Just, I could not stop the chatter, you know? And, and of course, by then, wouldn't the guy be an, like a, a, an expert five times? I mean, give me a break, you know? So, so anyway, um, then one night we were out and we came home and I had had some caffeine. And when, uh, when we were ready for bed, I, I wasn't ready for bed. I was just ready to go. And I said, well, I'm going to go back in the back bedroom and, and I'll sleep back there so I don't keep you awake. And I went back there and I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to my meditation tape. And I did. And immediately from, from the first moment of it, it was dead silence. And I knew something was going to happen, you know, and I was kind of apprehensive. And all of a sudden, I had this experience begin where I was, where I, I was in total darkness, total inky black, this, this place that was just thick and warm, warmth like love, you know, caring and just the most fantastic feeling. And, and at the same time I was falling, I felt like I, like I fell off of a cliff backwards and I was falling and falling forever, like five minutes. And, um, suddenly I started to slow, to feel myself slow down and, and then eventually stop. And I was just in this deep, quiet, dark, but in, not scary dark, just beautiful. I, I can't, there are no words to, to explain it. And um, 
and I, and I was scared, of course, a little bit. I'm like, what is happening? You know, I had never had an experience like that before. And, um, and I had wondered, what was that falling? Like, was I falling inside of myself? Was it possible that I was falling in, into the center of my soul or something like that? That sounds too, too weird, but, you know, I wonder. I have no idea. I still to this day don't know what that was exactly. But all of a sudden, I noticed that I could see. I'm still in this pitch dark black. And I, and I can, and I started to, to be able to see, and it was like a topography that I could see in the dark, in the black. Now, at the same time, the other thing that was very scary for me was I could, I knew I was still on my bed. I knew I was still safe laying on my bed and, and I could be at both places at once at the same time. And then, so I'm just kind of, processing all that. And then suddenly, as if that wasn't scary enough, kind of, um, for a guy like me, you know, I'm just out of the blue, this has happened. And, and there was a guy walking off to my right and coming around in front of me. And he was wearing a robe and he had a hood on. And I'm like, God, am I glad he doesn't have a side. Because <laughs> it could have been Grim Reaper. Could have been. Could have worked out not so good. But anyway, this seriously, this guy walked up in front of me and said, "I'm here to show you some things. I'm going to guide you through some experiences." And he told me some things. I don't. Don't be afraid. You you're, you will not be harmed. And and I'm thinking, you know, this is a like a dream or something. I, I just, I can't figure out. I've never heard of anybody even having a, 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 an experience like this. And so he asked, would you like to fly? And I said, sure, who wouldn't? You know, I've had dreams of flying and, and I love that. And all of a sudden we were flying together over a, a mountain range. And there was, you know, all the stuff that I loved. There was a mother bear and two two young ones feeding in some shrubs on, on the side of a mountain, eagles flying, uh, grabbing each other's talons and tumbling and all this kind of stuff. And, um, um, and the weirdest thing was I could look over at him and see him next to me flying over this, this beautiful place. At the same time, I could see us both from up above to the right and, and behind us and I was still aware that I was laying in my bed. All of this was happening at the same time. And I, I thought I lost it. I mean, I just, I've never, I, I couldn't believe it. And so at the same time, all of this was going on that I still had that tingling, just immense feeling of, of being loved. And then all of a sudden we were back in the, in the dark place where it began. And he said, to me then, would you like to meet God? And I'm like, yes. And suddenly we were at another place and this guy came walking up in blue jeans. He had brown like loafers. He had a, a button up flannel shirt. And, and I can even see that the uh, sleeves were about a third of the way rolled up. And he walked up to me and I said, are you God? And he said, yes, I am. I present myself to you in this way for your comfort. Um, and he said, do you have any questions? And I said, yes. Um, what is this stuff? And he laughed and put his arms out and said, which stuff? And he said, or I said, this, this thick, tingly, loving, caring environment, whatever this is, what is it? And he said, it's love. It's pure love. You're experiencing uh, the love that you will feel when you come home. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and, and he smiled and looked at me and I said, it's so thick I could swim in it. Mm -hmm. and, and he laughed and put both of his arms out and said, then swim, you know, and then he, he was laughing and he walked away and I could have kicked myself. Because I got a chance to ask God a question, and I asked him, "What is this stuff?" <laughs> <laughs> you blew it. Deep. <laughs> so anyway, 
then then that ended. Then the guide person asked me, would you like to experience heaven? And I said, yes. And instantly we were in a, a meadow, of course, flowers, beautiful flowers and trees and and everything, but everything was alive. Everything, you could feel everything. And I could feel it, It you could feel that it loved you, right? And, and, and it felt like, it, <laughs> there's no words. I mean, like, it's yeah. like, it's like family. It's like you're part of them and, and they're part of you or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I even remember there was a bird that came, you know, far off. And the, and the closer it came flying past us or to us, the, the stronger we could feel it. And then as it left, it you could feel it less and less as it got further and further away. And, and it was just fascinating, the, the whole thing. And, and I asked, why are there no people? And he said, because it's not your time to be here. He says, you haven't died and uh, you won't for some time, but... Um, and he didn't explain just exactly, but I, I went away with the feeling that I, I just couldn't see our past loved ones or, or anyone uh, until until it was time, mm -hmm. you know, wasn't ready yet for whatever reason, I didn't get to ask. And so then, um, and then I was back in the dark place by myself. And then I could feel myself on my bed. And I thought to myself, if this is real, I should be able to get out of this. And um, and just be in my bed. And then if it really is real, I should be able to, to wish it back and go back to it. I don't know why that made sense to me, but I did it. I said, that's it. I don't want any more of this right now. And I went back and I was laying on my bed listening to my, my music, my own tape. Was it too and overwhelming? It was. It, I mean, on one hand, I was scared to death, you know, but right. on the other, I wanted more, you know, because it was so incredible. So, so then and I you wanted to prove to yourself that it really that, happened. that it was real. And, and the thing was at that point already, I was hoping the reason that I wanted it to, to prove to myself that it was real was so that I had a hope of being able to go back to that anytime in the future that I wanted yeah. to, it was that incredible. So, so I did, I, um, I, I turned my attention back to going back into it and I did. But just as I did, the um, the tape quit running, the recording quit running, and it was 39 minutes. That whole experience took 39 minutes, and so I wanted more. So I reached over and I turned my uh, started my uh, recording again, and this time I was not. I didn't go back to that same place. Something different happened. This time I was laying on my bed, and this intense feeling that I was describing of love, apparently was so strong this time it, it, and it just felt like it was pulling at me as I laid on my bed. And it went on for like 10 minutes and, and all of a sudden it stopped. And I noticed that my, my heart was racing. It was, this, it was that intense, that tingling. It started to make me even feel like I was starting to shake and not just tingle, you know? And, and then I, I, took a couple of breaths and, and relaxed. And all of a sudden it came back. And this time it was worse. This time I, that I say worse, but better. Really. More intense. Oh my gosh. And it was just, again, you, you just, there, what I, what I experienced first that I thought I couldn't describe, this was, this was 10 times better, you know, mm -hmm. and it just kept going. And for another 10 minutes, I experienced that. And all of a sudden, boom, it stopped. And, and I felt like it was lifting me almost off of my bed. Now, almost, I think it just felt like I was weightless, but, but I, I, it quit and I felt like I sunk back into the bed. So I was confused about that. And then I, now my heart was racing like I had been running and, and I was breathing hard and it was Anita neatest thing. And I, th and I thought, I want to try this one more time. I want to see if I can make this happen again. And, and it started again. And this time it was just mind blowing. I mean, it pulled for some, I don't know what the pulling was, I, but it felt like it was lifting me off of my bed. There was one point where I was trying to notice if I was still in my bed. And the only thing that I could identify really touching the bed was uh, my heels and the back of my head. It was like I was lifted off of that bed. And 
it went on for 10 minutes and it, it was to the point of where I was afraid I was going to have a heart attack. Yeah. I mean, it was just that exciting. And then all of a sudden it was this bright light and this popping noise. And I said, that's it. <laughs> wow. I've had enough. And just then the uh, recording stopped again. And I know those recordings were 39 minutes and I listened to two of them. So that whole experience took that, that amount of time. Was the popping noise and the bright light, it's not audible to your ears, but it's more of in your mental, like a, inside your your head? I, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I don't know if it was an actual noise. Yeah. I don't remember even asking Shirley if she heard anything. But I mean, I, by that time, I was so shaken. I just, I, I you know, I, I, don't even, I don't even know what I was thinking, you know, yeah. other than, other than that was the most incredible thing that that I have ever experienced. And um, I was scared to death that how I was going to get up in the morning and tell Shirley what happened without her thinking that I was completely crazy, you know. <laughs> and, um, and I wanted to do it again. I wanted to be able to, to control it, to, to bring it back when I wanted to, you know, and that. So... So from there then, um, I, okay, in the morning, I, I told Shirley, obviously we got up and had coffee and I, and I had to tell her and I just told her and she thought it was fantastic. You know, she thought it was the best thing in the world. And I'm like, I'm not so sure. I don't know what it was. And so then we, we wanted to know. So then we went to uh, Camp Chesterfield and talked to some people up there and some other spiritualist churches around this area to talk to people to see if anybody can tell me what was going on. And nobody really gave me a clear idea of what that could have been, you know? So, so anyway, I didn't know what else. Oh, the other thing I did too, I forgot this. That morning, the first thing that I did was I emailed Sandra. Sandra was in Heathrow, I believe. She had just been at Arthur Finley College and, uh, and she was on her way back. And I, I sent her the, the same thing that I just told you as best as, a, as I could type it and, and explain it and asked her if she had ever heard of anything like that. And she said, well, not exactly, not the whole thing, but I've heard pieces of things like that. And uh, she said, you know, something to the effect of, you know, that that much she, she felt was real, you know, some, some sort of a, of a, a spiritual experience. But that, again, that was it, you know, so we couldn't find um anybody to be able to tell us what that was what that was just exactly and and I had three things that that I wanted more than anything number one was to be able to duplicate so I kept on meditating and it, and I couldn't make it happen again and so I wanted to know what happened what it was um how I could do it again or if I'd ever be able to do it again and and what was the purpose of it I had no idea, but it changed my life. I mean, you know, I'm telling you this this uh, from memory. It was like it happened an hour ago. You yeah. know, it's just, I, I don't think I would ever forget that. And, and surely, did you think he was crazy? No, not at all. I have always had a strong belief in anything spiritual. So I was relieved actually that this happened to him because I could never discuss anything like this with him. He poo-pooed it, you know, <laughs> this isn't real, you're nuts. No, so, I didn't say you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> finally, I you wasted your time and not nuts. <laughs> finally he was on the same page with me and it was something that um, we could explore together. So I thought it was wonderful. Great. So after about two weeks, guess what had happened again? And this time it was much more simple. It wasn't as intense as um, the first time. Um, but, and, and it was it was surprising because it was so much more simple. We were going somewhere and I was waiting for Shirley. She had about a half an hour before she was gonna be ready. And so I just laid down on the couch and closed my eyes and meditated a little bit just there. And and it happened again, a, a, a very similar experience, but less, less time and less magnitude. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I noticed from then on was, and that it and it reoccurred after that, 
pretty often, pretty easily. And I was so glad. But the thing that I noticed was I could feel spirit. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that they're with us all the time anyway, period. But when I called to them and I, and I asked Maya this uh, one time that, um, why is it when you come, do, can I feel you so instantly and so easily? You know, I, and, and she said, it's not that I'm not there. I am with you all the time. But when you call for us, it excites us. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of, without, without saying these words, and this was a long time ago, it was kind of like that. So it's what we live for, is to be able to, to uh, connect and, and, uh, uh, and that sort of thing with, with you. So, so anyway, um, I continued doing that, continued meditating. And, um, and, and so when I said that, Maya told me this, this was later on. I didn't know all this at the time, but I did notice that I felt uh, spirit. Now, the main reason I did all this was because I wanted to meet Shirley's mom, and I, and I didn't. I had this other experience and, and these wild things going on, but I hadn't met her. Then in Sanders' um, uh, interviews, I heard her interview Dr. Craig Hogan. Um, and he had a, um, a system and, and probably still does uh, called uh, Afterlife Connections, Craig Hogan's Afterlife Connections or something to, to that nature. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to try this. I'll see what this is about and read about it. On, a, on his page, on his web page. And I thought that sounds pretty neat. I'll try that to, to meet Shirley's mom. And, and I did, and it worked. And, and I'm like, that, it can't be that simple, you know? And, and, and when you do this, it's a, it's a, it's a self-guided thing. He teaches you how to guide yourself through a meditation. You, you set up a date more or less and a time to meet your loved one. And you, you even pick the place, a safe place, a beautiful place where, where you would feel safe to, you know, do this and real or imaginary. And I, and I went through all that and I met her mom. And then when you're done, you're supposed to journal back to, to Craig Hogan, your experience so that he could help you with it. And I did. And I told him, I said, I, 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 this was easy for me. And I, and I met my mother-in-law, which I intended. And, and I, I enjoyed it very much, but I really think it was just my imagination. Mm -hmm. And he explained to me the difference between imagination and um, unfoldment. <clears throat> and and I understood what he was saying. And I, and he you know he said that uh, spirit has the uh, uh, power to put words and thoughts, ideas, pictures into our into our minds. Mm -hmm. Our thoughts are not our own, basically. And I took it with a grain of salt. I'm like, not really buying it, but I'll keep trying and just see what happens. And it worked several other times and, and it was great. And, and it was very surprising, uh, some of the results. And, and I really thought that, that it could be real, but I wasn't buying it completely yet. That wasn't me. So anyway, um, then I thought, well, what if, if this works, what if I use the same system to try and and I heard about guides and especially that everybody had a primary guide uh, that was with them from before life to to through and and to the end of their life when they come back home and I thought well if I've got a guide I would like to try this and and, and meet him and I just I said meet him I expected that guys would have guys guide meetings or I mean uh, uh, guides and male guides and. So, so I did this and don't you know, the person starts walking up again from, from far off coming around in front of me. And she too was wearing a robe with a hood and it was a small woman. I didn't know it was just, I didn't even know that it wasn't a small person, you know, a small male guy, but I couldn't see her face. But when she spoke, it was a, it was a female voice. And that's another thing about this too. The same thing with the guy before. I don't think the speaking was words. I think it was more feeling than, than it was. And I certainly, and, and I couldn't, for whatever reason, no face. I could just see the shape. 
And so anyway, she, she came up to me and, and she spoke first. Uh, she said, I am, I am your primary guide. Um, we don't use names. You won't either when you come home. We, it's more, I, if I remember right, like an energy signature that, that we identify with each other from or something along those lines. But if it makes you feel comfortable, you could call me Maya. She said, I lived thousands of lives and, um, and I've had many names, but you could call me Maya. And uh, so that's how I met Maya. And, and then we, I did it several times. And we spoke a little bit and each time for a little while, and then she would leave. And um, so then eventually in my meditations, um, she would speak to me when she started speaking to me, which didn't happen before. And she said, eventually she said, you will be my messenger. I will bring you information that you'll share with people in need and, um, and this will help them. And uh, she said, um, it'll be up to you to choose how to do this, but y you'll do this. And she said, and you'll write books. Eventually you will write books. And I said, no, I, I'm dyslexic to a degree. I probably today read it at fourth, fifth grade level or something like that. I've always, I don't know why, you know, just had trouble reading. And um, so, so I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to write a book. I can barely read a book. I'm not doing that. And she would not argue. She would never say a word about anything. If I ever, if I ever disagreed with anything, nothing, crickets. But, but then I started receiving these messages. Most of them at the beginning were for me. Mm -hmm. uh, thing, just things about self-forgiveness and, and uh, why there is no need even to forgive yourself. You're beyond that. It's not, you know, because it gets very involved. Basically, in the long run, there's, there's no right and wrong. You're here to experience everything good, bad, and indifferent, and it's all useful, and it all ends ultimately in love as a result. So you can do no wrong. There's no reason to forgive yourself even, you know, but you know, when you're in this environment, in this world, you know, it can, it can help to, to stop the clutter and the, the things that are holding you back. So um, the messages kept going and I wasn't writing them. I wasn't going to write them down, you know, because it was too hard, you know, it would take too long. And, and I, they had the wrong person. And I said, why did you pick me? And she said, because there are libraries that are full of books that, that uh, nearly more than half of the population of the world would read the first chapter and put the book down and never pick it up again because it was so wordy. You know, they were written by scholars and they were so wor uh, wordy that we want our messages to be given in, in the word of a simple person. And I'm like, well, you got me there. <laughs> I'm your man. <laughs> So, so anyway, uh, so again, <clears throat> there was no arguing or anything. I, I, but, and I felt guilty. I was wondering what was going to happen. I, I was really afraid that this was going to end because I wasn't doing my job. And then all of a sudden the message just got so beautiful. I'm like, I got to write this down. I got to at least write down bullet points, you know, so I can tell Shirley. Because yeah. I would ask him after he meditated, what did you hear? And he would say, oh, I don't know. I don't remember. And yeah. I said, you can start writing this down. So as soon as you did it, so that I can understand what you're receiving. And so he did. Um, but did he, did he write while in the meditation or after? No. All of these messages, it wasn't like automatic writing. Because as I talked to a lot of people that said that I that I went and told my experience, you know, and asked them what this was, and that's what they said. The nearest thing would be automatic writing, but it, it wasn't. I would get a download of information. I would get this whole message, you know, and then they said it's time to. They would say originally she would say it's time to write, and um, I would get up, turn the light on, and and write the message. 
And she would say, I will stay with you. If you have any questions or problems, I'll be here to answer them. And you know what? I'll bet you there isn't a handful of times ever in the last you know, five years, 300 and something messages that I, that I had a question or mm-hmm. a problem at all. I mean, it just flowed. And um, so, so yeah, I mean, the, she just made it more beautiful and, and more desirable for me to, uh, to want to write these messages. And um, I continued to do that to the point of where um, I started typing it. It was too hard for sure, poor Shirley, I, because my spelling is horrible and my penmanship is probably worse. <laughs> so she would try to, uh, eventually it wasn't just bullet points. You know, it was just, there was so much stuff and I want to capture it all. And I tried and, you know, but it was amazing to me how they get you to do stuff. I mean, one time it was in the middle of the winter. And again, I went to, to the back bedroom uh, for whatever reason at night, I couldn't sleep or whatever. And I didn't want to keep waking Shirley up. So, uh, and it was freezing cold, not really freezing cold, but it was cold. Mm-hmm. And so she was giving me a message, like, I don't know, two o'clock in the, in the night. And, and I could tell by the persistence, she wanted me to get up and write that thing. And I'm like, I'm not going to get up and write that, you know, it's cold. And, you know, I want to go back to sleep, you know, and, and it just kept coming. So there I was eventually wrapped up in a blanket at, at my desk in my, in my back bedroom back there, writing the star message, you know? So, so they have ways of getting me to do their, yeah. <laughs> do, what, do what they want. Eventually though, we got so many messages. We were, we thought we need to do something with these. So that's when we started the Facebook group, uh, spirit messages from Maya. And, uh, we started posting them there and inviting people to, uh, join the group and read the messages. And from there, of course, people had questions. Can you contact my loved one? And um, we did quite a bit of that. Yeah, and that really made me nervous, very bad, because, you know, to this day, I can't prove any of this. There's Mm no one that could prove rock solid to anyone that all of this is real. As a matter of fact, I hate to admit this, but, and I have a bunch of times on our our, uh, group page, I do question it. I mean, and, and I can guarantee you when I'm involved in this, when I'm sitting and receiving this information, the feeling that I get, I swear, I, I, I tell people all the time, I would do absolutely anything in this world to be able to share this with someone for three seconds, mm-hmm. just so I could say, see, yeah, this, this is, there's no words. You know what I mean? If you could feel it, it's just incredible. But you know, they're, 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 after having a message like that, it's just nuts how, how, gosh, there's just no words to explain. But, and don't you know, two or three days later, I'll be questioning it. You know, and it's like, how can I do that? You know, how can I go from such extremes? But, but I do, you know, and I, I don't know, I guess it's a good thing. So, so yeah, I can't, I can't prove any of this, but it, it's amazing. And it continued to, to be, more and more amazing. I mean, there were so many incidences. And then eventually I met another guy, a, a young, a young lady. Um, and she, she was a, a young girl and she said, we've lived many lives together. Hmm. And I said, oh, really? She, she was three years old, four years old, I think it was. And um, she died of tuberculosis in, in uh, 1736 in uh, up in a, uh, a small area of, uh, on, or not Ontario, but uh, uh, Canada, um, near Montreal, in an area that which would become on, Ontario. And I'm like, no, Montreal's in Quebec. I used to live in Niagara Falls, so I know the boundaries a little bit, all that kind of stuff. You know, so, so I'm yeah. like, this is not real, you know. Well, guess what? After I got done, after she told me some stuff about her life there and all that, um, I looked it up, I looked it up, and gosh darn, doesn't the uh, the, uh, the 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 dividing line between Ontario and Quebec come straight down south, uh, just a little bit east of Toronto, and before it hits Lake Ontario, it goes over to the east a little bit. It goes all the way over. You got to see how far over it goes, and I didn't realize that. And it stops about forty or fifty miles, I'm guessing, from guess where, Montreal. Oh, wow. 
incredible. I had no idea about that. So, so I get these kinds of uh, little little snippets of proof that mm -hmm. this is me doing this, you know. And I've been what was that? I'm sorry. Some evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Exa exactly. So she, she introduced you to Broussard, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the one thing that was peculiar about Mary is when I would meditate and she would come in, she would make my head move. And when, for some reason, when I meditated, I, I would catch my head going, uh, moving from side to side, and and I noticed after a while, it's my my head was going like the infinity circle, mm. which was cool, and it was so soothing. And I asked her, why well, is that you doing that? Because I've never done it. She said, yes. And I said, why? And she said, how does it make you feel? And I'm like, it's soothing. It was just something, it was hypnotic. It was beautiful. You know, so, so she said, that's why, you know, and that was the end of that. Well, then all of a sudden one time I was, I was meditating and I could feel her energy come in and she, pro I don't remember. She probably even spoke a little bit, whatever. And then all of a sudden I noticed um, my head was moving and um, it seemed like my eyes were, were uh, even though my eyes were closed, it was like my eyes were forming uh, letters. And that bothered me because there's, there was another medium. I can't remember who it was that used to do that. So I think she said her nose was it a she? I think so. Would spell words. Would spell words. Well, this, well, I was watching this and my eyes were doing a letter and it was a B and it was an R. And anyway, long story short, it, was, it ended up being Brossard. Mm. And I'm like, okay. But that was it. There was nothing else. I didn't get any more information. But then in following um, meditations, I, I did, uh, I think she came back, if I remember right, and told me that Broussard was one of your guides also. And then eventually Broussard, Broussard came through. And um, way in the future, Broussard would become the uh, spokesperson for the collective group Maya. And, and that was another thing too, right away, that, I, that I'll slip, slip in here too. One, one time Maya was uh, speaking to me and, then, and she was talking about we and us. And I'm like, whoa, who's, who's we and us? She was talking about the messages and that, the, and that they were coming from we and us. And I said, I thought the messages were coming from you. And she said, well, they are. But it, uh, it's, it's um, bigger than that now. Now there are a collective of, of souls, if you will, you know, spirit uh, entities working together to, to bring well, these messages through. Would that be your specific spirit team guides or is it a bigger collective much bigger okay. very much bigger. she 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 gave me an indication one time i can't remember exactly but it was huge you know started out smaller at first but it but it, she said it gained you know interest mm -hmm. and and uh, and it and it grew and and again you know that started with the skepticism you know like come on you know so <clears throat> I like what you said earlier about the names that, you know, there, that we have no name, but you can call us this if you like, because if our souls are eternal and my name was invented in 1974, then what was my name before that? Right. And would that still have any relevance that day? Right. If I go, you know, when I go back, am I still Robert? You know, what? Yeah, you know, and and I even wonder why she gave me Maya. You know, was that a recent life that she that she had? You know, but yeah. uh, and there's there's so much information I can't even begin to tell you. You know about <clears throat> the messages that that, uh, that they gave me, and um, there's one in particular that, that let, let me squeeze one in. Uh, and this and this one was recently. You know. Um, uh, and I, and I believe it was God. You know, did, did you know towards the end here that within the last year, my messages went from the Maya uh, contingency to uh, coming from God? Mm -hmm. Did, did yeah, you know that? Yep. Okay. So, so anyway, it was within the last month, maybe, or more, a little bit more. Um, for some reason, I just got this information from him that, <clears throat> do you know what a, a lot of mediums when you'll hear mediums say that 
uh, you're an old and powerful soul and you've lived 732 lives or something like that before. And, and I was always confused about that because if we're eternal beings, why would we only have that many lives? I, have we, were, we, were we like created and then just started 700 lives ago, you know, and, and we're here now and are, and are we going to go on for, you know, through eternity doing this or, or what happens, you know? And, and uh, so I, God came through and he said, the reason you hear that is because uh, they, those mediums are probably correct or, or very close to the, the number. But the problem is, is that we are all unique uh, consistencies of qualities and, and quantities of characteristics of God. And, um, and so you may have been you, uh, this person for a certain amount of lives, and then you accomplish everything that you wanted to be, and then you change the uh, consistency of the uh, characteristics and, and do more. So, so that's a funny thing too, you know, isn't that odd to think that possibly we could do that and yeah. that, that we could live for all those years as, and, but, but even while, even while we are those consistencies of who we are, which makes us unique, we can still be men or women or, you know, and any mix of things like that. So, so it's kind of wild to, to think of that kind of thing. It, it's the, the information that comes through is just, just wild. No. But uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, the reoccurring theme that I've been, you know, experiencing in, in my last couple of years is the soul is eternal and in some beliefs decides to come here to earth for the learning experience for a set amount of time. It's hard to grasp as a human being with our brains, you know, we have no recollection of this previous existence, but when you return, you will remember. And then you can say, well, well this is what I, my understanding of it is, you know, you decide you're going to go back, you're going to be something else, you're going to learn a new lesson, and then you'll be back again. And then it keeps, you know, we're, we're around for eternity. So, hey, I'm going to spend 80 years down, down on earth and learn a lesson. I mean, that's kind of the impression I've been getting, um, which, you know, kind of makes sense with what you were saying. It's, um, it's funny, too. One time Maya told me, you know, I had, I had a problem. I had confusion about whether or not there was reincarnation. And, the only, and, and she, a lot of times, would give me information that was so short and sweet and just to the point and would not say anything else about it. Mm. She said, what makes you think that one life um, in this world would satisfy your soul for eternity? That was it. I never heard another word. <laughs> but I mean, kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when when you go into meditation, this isn't the same. This you, you wouldn't consider that trance like what other mediums do when they go into trance. Or are you developing into a trance mediumship? Okay, that's a that's a good question and perfect timing. We we have a little bullet point uh, list here, you know, to follow to kind of, uh, you know, touch just about all areas of things that have happened here uh, over the years. And we never knew. I always searched for for what I was, what I was doing, and where I was supposed to be going with it, what I was supposed to do. I knew I was supposed to be a messenger, but I didn't know anything about it, you know. And so, at the conference, at the We Don't Die conference. Um, and I believe, I can't remember, I believe it was the first one. We met Phil Dykes and I uh, scheduled some time with him and told Phil what was going on. And, and I told him about the, the big initial experience that, that started it all. And um, I typed it afterwards and sent it to him. And he typed it back and he, and he told me prior to this anyway, you are a trans medium. That whole experience was uh, spirit um, letting you know what they could do with you when you were in trance, when you, you know, when you were in a, in a trance uh, position. And um, so, yeah, when I, when I 
when I meditate, I supposedly go into a light straight state of trance and I get these messages, these downloads of, of information and, and then I type them. And, and Shirley will tell you when I'm typing them and she would come into my room or well, something would happen with work or something like that and while I was in the middle of typing a message and she would come in it was okay but it was it was not okay to stay it was <laughs> tell me what you need <laughs> go away <laughs> well, I, I could tell from the look on his face I said are you typing a message mm -hmm. I said okay I'm, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave I can tell that you're not in a state where you can communicate with me and yeah. I would just quietly walk away yeah but uh yeah, Phil was able to tell David and I, when we meditate together, he gave us some tips on how to help him go into trance better. Uh, and it involved the type of music we listen to, music choices, uh, and in what sequence. And he told us we would be good to meditate together. I would be his battery. I would provide the energy uh, to help him. And so we did that for quite a long time and it worked wonderfully. Nice. And I smile, I want you to say that because most of the music that we use is uh, Scott Milligan's. Okay. I, I asked Scott after one of his workshops uh, what that music was and, and he told me and, and that's a lot of what we use because it was perfect and, uh, and, and fell in line with what Phil said, you know, would, would be helpful. And, and the funniest thing was he told me prior to this that this was going to happen, that eventually they would speak through me. And I'm like, again, no, <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> but it did. <laughs> so the more I meditated and the more we meditated, <clears throat> the more I felt this weird kind of like, I want to call it pressure. And it, it was like, it was almost like I wanted to, to yell, but I didn't know what, or talk, or, or scream. It was just this energy. And, and I even remember we were, we were watching some things on Gaia TV that were spiritual related and spiritually related. And um, same thing where I, I would just get this where I wanted to, it was like, I wanted to say something but I have no idea what. Uh, the first time David spoke, we were meditating. I had music running and all of a sudden uh, he starts talking. He just says, we are here. They always start with that. We are here. We are here. And I said, <clears throat> hello. And they said, please. They asked me to please leave the music on, but to turn it down. And uh, then they just started talking and we had had everything on we we sort of thought it might be coming so i had my recorder going and we caught everything on tape oh wow i don't, I don't remember and that, that's another thing too <clears throat> and, and this kind of leads to <clears throat> the the uh, some some support to this is trance i think when i write those messages i hear every word of it and, and, and it's even more than, it's almost like I feel some of the words. It's strange. It just, it's like I feel some of the concepts and, and words. It's not just words. Like at the end of it, I remember so very little. Shirley, again, my typing was horrible. You know, so, so I would get done typing this stuff and then give it to Shirley and then she would fix it and she would have questions. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> He, I don't even remember. He wouldn't remember anything about what I was, what does this say? Because I couldn't quite understand it. And he wouldn't even remember saying it, but he would be able to just pause for a moment and listen. And they would give him what the answer to my questions. And I would fill in the blanks. Very, that was pretty cool. Very, very strange. Wow. And, and the other thing is I did not like to, I, I never liked to re, go back and reread them. Once in a while, Shirley would read one to me. And I mean, it was, that was, I just loved that because it was fantastic. It would bring tears to my eyes sometimes. I would sit there and she was reading it back to me and shaking my head. I'm like, this cannot possibly have come from me. I, no. I, I couldn't explain it. And 
Surely, have, surely, have you had conversations with David's spirit guides in real time when he's in the trance? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, we have a lot of recordings of that. Um, yeah, every time we would sit for trance, uh, I would record it and we would talk back and forth. Yes, sometimes the messages would be for me. Um, they would be giving me uh, advice on uh, what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right, how to improve, you know, my mediumship. So, yeah, we would talk back and forth and they would tell me, please think of us as friends. We are your friends. And just talk to me like you're talking to your friends. So it was it was it was great. How lucky are you? I know, right? <laughs> uh, I know. You mentioned Scott Milligan a few minutes ago, and for anybody watching that doesn't know who Scott is, I have a video of him on, on my uh, YouTube channel. He's a physical medium, and I just saw Scott in New Orleans last weekend. He gave a, a couple seance demonstrations, and he gave me this book by Arthur Finley, and it's called On the Edge of the Etheric, and it I wrote, I wrote down one of the lines from it because I was reading it this morning before our call. And it, he wrote, trance is a state of unconsciousness certain abnormal people experience. Do you consider yourself abnormal? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can't argue with that. I don't know if I was normal prior to all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, shoot. Yeah, so I don't think you want to write that down. You know what's funny? What, what I always tell people is, is that you know, I feel like this, this stuff is so far out, but I know that I'm boringly sane. <laughs> and that, that's the truth. I mean, you know, I know I'm not nuts. This is coming from somewhere. And the other thing that's weird about all of this is, is in, in a way, I don't like doing this. It's not, it takes a lot of time. And, and a lot of times, especially when 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 I do the trans speaking, uh, I'm zoned. It it takes it takes a, I, it's like it's it's kind of weird because I feel hyped, but at the, by the time I'm done, uh, you know, I just feel like drain, and 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 I also, in a way, don't like doing this stuff because because I don't want people to judge me that that I that I am a whack job, you know, or whatever. And so there, there are a lot of aspects of it that, that I really don't care for. But, but at the same time, I just keep doing it. because. And I've always said everything about this has always been loving, so loving and supportive and beautiful and never anything negative. I'll just keep going and see, see where it leads. And, and um and and Phil uh, told me, you know, I, I would possibly do some uh, light uh, physical work uh, in wow. the future. And but, but he said, and it's funny too because boy, he nailed it for me. He said, you you will not be uh, a big, you know, personality. You'll not be, you'll not find yourself on the stage with five hundred people in the room or anything like that. You will hope, you will have small groups of of people, and and that's you know, how you'll keep it. And I'm like, boy, I was glad about that. Yeah. <laughs> so what, one thing that the, the most recent thing that's happened is David said, um, it came about because a friend of ours mentioned the uh, books, the Conversations with God books by Neil Donald Walsh, saying that they had changed your life and you need to read them. So I got uh, a few of them, started reading them and, and they were fantastic. And I, since David doesn't read I got the audiobook version for him and he started listening to them uh, a little bit not too much yeah like a week maybe and just going to work 30 minutes here or there whatever right and um one day one afternoon we were meditating and I would usually ask him after meditation so how was that did you hear anything he says he said the energy today was really different I think it was the big guy and I said, really? Because I felt the energy too. When there's that much energy in the room and I'm in there, I feel it. I said, I felt it too. Then I said, what, did you hear anything? And he said, 
he's happy that we're listening to the conversations with God books. He likes that I'm listening to them. So we kept meditating. David kept listening to the audio books a little more. Um, and then the messages change all of a sudden one day, David was meditating and, and it was God. Mm -hmm. And of course I couldn't believe it. Mr. Skeptic, you know, I was, I wasn't going to believe that of course, you know, but it was fantastic. I mean, the, the information that came through and, and the thing, and, and the one thing though, again, I was just petrified because I did not want to be a copycat. I didn't want to be caught doing somebody else's, you know, something that somebody else had already done. I don't like that sort of thing at all, you know, because I don't want to be, I don't want to be judged as a, as a, whatever, a fake or, you know, if, if I was a fake and I knew it, I'd gladly admit it. I don't need to be caught. Right. But so anyway, um, the, the good thing about it was, is that the information in ways was different. It wasn't the same information as Neil Donald Walsh had. And, and it wasn't in the same format. Um, the information that came through, I don't know if you're familiar with the books or not, but uh, uh, God told him that we're, we're going to have a, a trilogy of, of uh, books here. And uh, that's, that's what this information was about, basically. The, the information that came through to me was kind of like small subjects. Uh, random, un unattached. There was no sequence being followed. It was just whatever message it was, and it, that was it. And they were anywhere from two to 5,000 words long. And I could get three of those a, a week. And they were dialogues. God would say, good morning, whatever. And you would talk back and forth. And so it was just a dialogue back and forth between David and God. That part was similar. To. That part was similar. Yeah. So, but, but anyway, that, that was eventually like everything else. I, I couldn't deny it. I couldn't, I could question it and I could be skeptical about it, but I had no proof. I had no more proof that it wasn't real than it was that it was. Right. That it was real. So, so you are courageous for going forward and, posting all your messages received um where 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 can people find them spirit messages from maya is the name of it it's a facebook group page on facebook yeah yep. and, and it's a closed uh group page so you have to be invited you have mm -hmm. to ask to be invited and so it's a safe place you know yeah and then the uh, audio the audio message that the trans messages i recorded are with um, Spoken Spirit Wisdom, also a Facebook group. Um, and that's where all the trance recordings are. Okay. And well, I'll put a link to those on the, the video description if you, if you like. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Um, the one other time, little thing we wanted to stick in here because this is kind of big, big, something new, and, and it sort of goes with what Phil told you. Um, and, and the Maya group. And the Maya group. So after, since we retired, David hasn't been doing any messages, hasn't been writing anything, and he was feeling really guilty about it. And in meditation one day, they, they, he was told the messages are going to change. And then they were showing him that he would be speaking before a small group of people in, in a room um, that we recognize. A friend of ours opened up a, uh, a center for healing and uh, we're gonna be doing his first uh, public. public trance demonstration. demonstration this coming week oh, in, wow. front of, in front of a group of people. Uh, it's by invitation only. Uh -huh. um, Give it a try and see what happens. Reluctantly. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's a lot of courage. I mean, that yeah, incredible. I'm I'm looking forward to hearing what happens. Well, we'll yeah, we'll little let little you know. Um, we we are going to record it, uh, and if it, if it, if it all comes 
through fine. We're going to post it on the uh, Spoken Spirit Wisdom uh, page, page on Facebook. So what's the big picture here for everybody watching? You know, people come to We Don't Die radio and now We Don't Die films for you know, information about the afterlife and to get comfort and to learn, you know, what could we learn from your experience? And, and I, I always think that that's just it. I mean, if you listen to the uh, messages, you of course can draw your own conclusions. I mean, there's so much information there. There are over 300 of them and they're so long, but all of it, I, I can remember, uh, remember Maya saying one time that this, uh, these messages are to, are to bring uh, relief um, to a degree to people who, who are in need of, of this, this type of information, to bring peace and comfort to people. Um, she used to say, it does not have to be this hard. It was never meant to be this hard. And she never did elaborate exactly on, on to what degree, but, uh, you know, and, and what exactly that meant. But <clears throat> but that was that was the focus, and and we got <clears throat> we ended up having you know two or three thousand members on on our uh, page there, and uh, a lot of it was uh, from um, helping parents heal, and I was I was glad about that, you know what I mean? Because there were a lot of people that that did you know thank us for the re relief that 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 it brought them, that they uh, were confident that they would or could. Uh, meet their loved ones again. I shouldn't say could, would, that we don't die and they will be seeing their loved ones again. Yeah. And so that was a neat thing to be involved with. I've always been very grateful to be a part of part of that. I, I love that aspect of it, that's for sure. Yeah, it's very special. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's been a pleasure seeing you guys and thanks for sharing your stories. No problem. So I look forward to hearing the results of your um, your audience uh, reaction to your practice. So give me a call when it's when it's over. We'll do that. We'll definitely do it. All right. Well, thanks. Thank thanks, you. Robert. Sure, appreciate. It. Good seeing you. Yeah. Uh, good to see you guys. Appreciate yep. it. All yep. right. Bye. Okay. Take care.